Now we're off to consider the curvature of a surface after having seen the curvature of a line. We're going to consider here surfaces of revolution. You can think of that as having a function that then gets wrapped around the z-axis and you get a surface of revolution. Here we're going to use cylindrical coordinates. The x is rho times the cosine of phi, that would be your x. The y is the rho times the sine of phi, and your z is your height. But your z is going to be defined by a constriction. It's going to be the function, the profile function, f of rho. And if you let phi equal 90, so you're flat against this wall here, then you're going to see the graph would simply be uh, here z as a function of y. The rho then becomes the y. It's an easy way to see it. So in cylindrical coordinates we have the arc length given by d rho squared plus rho squared d phi squared plus dz squared. And since the z is constrained to our function, we can think of the dz as f prime. That's the derivative of f with respect to the rho times d rho. So that gets uh, the dz uh, expressed in terms of here, d rho. So that means you have the dz squared uh, replacement. And when that is done, you're going to see that when you square this thing, and you have d rho squared with a 1, that's this first uh, piece, then the f prime squared will just be tacked on to the 1 by addition, and that gets you everything. Nice. Very nice line element. So this sometimes, is sometimes called the first fundamental form of the surface. And there's a nice, beautiful uh, visualization that you can see here where you look at uh, the ds squared, which is the arc length here, this little red uh, hypotenuse squared, is going to be equal to uh, this side here, which is given by this uh, arrangement. If you square that, that's what you get here. And then the other side, the rho squared d phi squared gets you the other piece. So notice the similarity in the one-dimensional case where you had the ds before we had this kind of an expression. We have the similar expression here for the, the d well, the dz is in the, into a, the calculation, and we did the uh, analysis, we get this term. So it's very, very similar to what we saw before, where we had uh, two pieces, one that looked like this, see, there it is there, and then the other one is the angle, angle part. So very nice. We also can look at the uh, area. The area would be simply the product of the, the two sides, and if we do that, we get this expression here for the area. And here is a nice little homework assignment for you to uh, find the surface areas for the following surfaces. And that would mean that you would do some integration, right? To do, do an integral, a little brush up on your integrals here. And you'd be doing the cone. And you do the cup and the upside down bowl. Very nice. And you know, you can let here, you go from zero to R for the row, capital R, and the, uh, the phi here, well, since it's a wraparound, goes from zero to pi. So that's a nice review of some calculus to sharpen you up. So we have the definition for the curvature of a one-dimensional curve given by the calculus formula, calculus one formula that you saw before. And we want to extend that to 2D. So the way to do this is to think of the two dimensions as two perpendicular ways of going about the curve. In other words, if you want to go about the curve here analysis, that's one dimension. The other dimension it would be into the page. So you're basically, basically looking here at two dimensions. You're going to go here into the page, you see, as one dimension, and this is the curvature of the other dimension. So the into the page one is the one I want to look at here, and then we're going to have to generalize this to two dimensions. So what we're going to do is say, well, we have the one dimensional case, the K1, which we derived earlier, and we'll take off the absolute magnitude sign, so surfaces can have positive or negative curvature. And then what is the other curvature? That's the one going into the page. 
Well, here I would like to then look at the perpendicular uh, measure here with respect to this uh, curve because if it's perpendicular then I'll have like an independence of the two parameters and I'm going to define here in R2 a radius uh, of curvature and a curvature K2 for this into the page this other dimension uh, that adds to the line analysis that we did earlier the one dimensional case which is this case here so the key is to note that this distance here from the z-axis is rho over cosine beta. So think of here this right triangle, and this is your hypotenuse, hypotenuse. And if you took the hypotenuse and multiplied it by the cosine of beta, you would get the rho, the rho parameter. All right, so if that's the case, then what we're going to do is say, that is the radius of curvature R2 for the revolution. We're going to take that to be R2, and the radius must be perpendicular to the profile curve to be fully independent of the R1 curvature as we swing around into the page. So we're going to take the radius of curvature for the other dimension to be this parameter here, this radius here, uh, and that's going to be, you know, perpendicular to here as we swing into the page. And we're going to then define the K. Remember, K is always reciprocal of the radius of curvature, so we then flip it. So we flip this, and then doing that, we're going to uh, look at a multiplication of the two to get the complete curvature. And that's what we do, we do down here. We're going to multiply both together. Now, what is this here? Uh, since uh, this uh, alpha plus beta is equal to 90, we're showing you here how we can get from beta angle terminology to the alpha terminology. So if we look over here, this alpha was a nice angle that we used in our one-dimensional analysis of curves. So here what we're saying is that since uh, this is a 90 degree angle in here from the red to the black, then alpha and beta are complementary. So if they're complementary, then the cosine of beta is a sine of alpha. All right, that was to get this nice alpha angle in there. So once we have this curvature two in terms of the alpha angle, then the sine of the alpha angle, we can now get that by taking like the delta F over the hypotenuse. So that's what we did, the, the delta F of the hypotenuse which is this square root thing times a delta uh, rho. So once when we do that, we can see we have a derivative uh, df d rho and just collect terms. Uh, this is what we're gonna have uh, when we work that out. So that was to get it into the language of our familiar parameters because cosine of beta was like some mother angle. So we relate it to the alpha, then we get this nice formula. And then by shoving everything together, by taking this thing, the 1 over rho, 1 over the square root with the df, uh, d uh, rho there, and putting it all together, uh, then we're going to have the super curvature or the curvature of the surface as the product of the two curvatures. All right. So this curvature here is going to be the k2. That's the one down there. K1 we did earlier for the one dimensional case, the, the curve itself. So this is the rho you might think the spinning into the page uh, curvature that's generated. And multiplying them together, I get here the second derivative of f, the first derivative of f there. And look at this. The denominator uh, combines the denominators to simplify 1 plus f prime squared. Then you have the 3 halves power plus 1 half power. You have then the 4 halves power, which is squared. All right, very nice formula. That's known as the Gaussian curvature and as a homework problem to get reinforcement, the mastery of this and the and to confirmation that we're on the right track is I want you to show that for a sphere that the, the curvature is one over R squared, which is what you would expect uh, for the sphere, one over R squared. So you show that and then a little more challenging assignment show that the Gaussian curvature for the hyperboloid here is given by this formula. And there you have a case of a negative surface because it's a wine glass. See how it curves inward? 
in contrast to the soccer ball or football there that has the uh, curvature which is positive. So uh, that is uh, deep stuff. And uh, remember, take the time uh, to work through all the calculations. You know, I'm quickly giving you a summary verbally to guide you through this, but nothing beats the pencil in hand and working out all the details step by step.